This is the city, meeting point of land and sky and sea, focal point of business, industry and agriculture, throbbing pulse of a mighty nation. These are the city's arteries, the lifelines of our nation. Before the city, an empty landscape and without those lifelines, so would it be, barren, lifeless waste. Along the arteries go swift passenger and cargo carriers, distributing and redistributing the fundamental needs of food and clothing, warmth and shelter, implements of labor, and the fruits of that work, bearing news and magazine and letter. In an ever-increasing tempo, all these things, expressive of the needs and desires of the human race, are carried smoothly in a never-ending flow, east or west, north or south, past farm and village, through town and city, the railroads make America move. found forests and we felled them, wantonly at first, then more carefully. For we needed shelter, protection from the elements and praying beasts, little scattered separated kingdoms, each called home. We had land, lots of it, rich but untamed, and with honest sweat we cleared it, turned it to our needs, used its richness, made it productive. The gentle beasts found forage and green pastures, and they multiplied, increasing our wealth, providing food and clothing. As the men toiled in the fields, so the women in their homes found pride in carding the wool which flowed from the spinning wheel. And in season, both men and women followed the furrows of upturned earth, sowing the seed which brought a glad harvest. Life was not easy. First came foot power, then animal power, and finally the wheel for bigger burdens. Then came steam and the railroads. What's this? You ain't heard about this? Folks down in Chestnut Street are all up in arms about it. It's going to be the death of all of us. They're building a railroad right through the most beautiful streets of our town. Oh, no, no. I tell you, a locomotive ain't got... Praise the Lord! <laughs> Folks, we never meant to go that fast. A railroad will ruin our trade. Are you going to stand for it? No! no, 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 no or do you want to be a suburb of New York? No! Here she comes. It goes awful fast, they say. Twelve miles an hour. A human can't stand it. It'd shake a body to pieces. Beauty, ain't she? You know what happened. Those who were dead set again them, forgot their fears, and everyone looked to the railroads as symbols of growth. 23 rail miles and 1830. The spanning of the continent in 1869. America was on the march. Steel ribbons brought life to the open plain, marking the way for the groundbreaking plow, the driller for oil, the builder in stone and concrete. Waste became farmland, crossroads became towns, and towns became cities. People and goods moved smoothly from place to place. A network bridging the miles, the railroads made and make the nation move. Part of that movement centers around the lake region. From upper lake strip mines come much of the iron ore that will make up this year's 87 million tons of steel for industrial and defense needs. Giant unloaders, part of the railroad's equipment, speed the transfer of the ore from the ship's hold to waiting car. 
In 17-ton bites, they move a boat's 12,000-ton cargo into waiting cars in less than four hours. And so outside the mill, the red earth of Minnesota joins the white stone of Pennsylvania and the black rock of West Virginia. Fire out of the earth to make strength out of the earth. Steel. The railroad's first tracks were wood, then wood with an iron strap. Next came cast iron and finally steel. And the steel rail is formed with the precision dictated by years of railroad research. Besides the steel needed for rail, the railroad industry must have thousands of tons for locomotives, cars, bridges, all adding up to nearly one-sixth of the nation's steel capacity. It was railroad expansion over the years that made large-scale steel production possible. Just as today, the railroads are the major haulers of steel products. They're equipped to handle big units speedily. Big units like these export packages being stacked for transit on an ocean vessel, going eastward to prove the meaning of that V. Tractors for farming, for road building, for logging, for industry. These and many other commodities make up the mile-long freight trains that move swiftly, hour after hour, helping to maintain the beat and rhythm of our economic life. abroad have meant that almost overnight new cities have sprung up across the nation, dedicated to the toughening of men for any eventuality, giving them the stamina and the keenness of the pioneers. Distant maneuvers often require moving masses of men and materials with great speed. And here, as always, the railroads help. Cooperating with military authorities, the roads can receive an order to move hundreds of thousands of men on short notice without batting an eye and without interfering with regular travel. Through the years, the railroads have helped bring about many changes in our economic life. On the range, 2,000 miles over the horizon, roam your future stakes and shoes. Remember the old Chisholm Trail, Texas to Chicago and the steers walking all the way? There was pioneering, wealth on the hook, and the only way to convert it into something spendable was to prod it along. Keeping a sharp watch for the dreaded brigands of the plains, the rustlers, men whose wealth came from stealing yours. Keeping a lookout for strays that wandered off keeping a six-shooter cocked for beasts that prey on strays, as destructive as rustlers, but less guilty, since their desire is only for food. Dreading always that the next watering place would be dry, that forage would be scarce. The railroads changed all that. Today, guarded from all the forces that would take their toll, 600,000 carloads of livestock a year go from range to market. This time saved means money saved by cattlemen and consumer alike. There's no need for hauling the whole beef to your butcher, when with the careful refrigeration the railroads give, it can be dressed at a central plant and waste products and waste motions eliminated. There is a right sort of car for any given hauling job the railroads have to do. There are the standard box cars, the oversized ones for furniture or automobiles, the flat and open top cars, the covered hopper cars for bulk movement of flour and cement, deep well cars for large or bulky machinery. Each year, the movement of grain to the huge elevators requires thousands and thousands of cars to be spotted, moved, and returned for reloading. There are cars for poles and piling, cars that move cured lumber to those new cities and to old ones expanding. Steel containers, five to the car, sorted and sped along by ingenious cranes in classification yards, 
provide a special service for a wide variety of commodities. Automobiles and trucks are moved quickly from factory to buyer in cars equipped with special loading devices to prevent damage on the road. And there are flat cars with unique fastenings, providing a fast and economical way to transport truck trailers over long distances. The tank car, long a servant of the petroleum and chemical industries, is ready to do its share for defense. Milk cars move on passenger train schedules from our dairy lands to the great cities so that all may have fresh milk and cream. Railroads don't always end at the water's edge. Car floats shuttle cars about the harbors. Freight, box, carton and bale. The package freight that comprises an enormous volume of less than carload merchandise movement is carefully loaded and sped off to consignee while the nation sleeps. Here is more unique railroad machinery, an elevator that empties a car of coal every 54 seconds. Coal has special trains, for its volume is one of the railroad's greatest single items. They themselves use a fourth of the output of the nation's mines and haul additional millions of tons for industrial and home use. Empty door boats slip alongside to be filled with the black rock. A car at a time is brought to the incline from the storage jar. Hauled swiftly up by the cable drawn Barney that pops up out of the pit. The full car kicks the empty down the switchback. switching has advanced to meet the increased speed of modern freight trains. Planned yard movement keeps 15,000 freight trains on the go every day. Box car, tank car, flat car, here's how they get in that order. From a receiving yard, incoming cars are pushed up a hump and allowed to coast down a gentle slope on the other side. Apparently all alone, save for the pin puller who uncouples them. But there are distant eyes. The man in the tower has long arms controlling every car on its way to the fan-like lines of track where new trains are made up. Once it was necessary to have a rider on each car to set the handbrake to reduce coupling shocks. Now it's faster, safer, more accurate. Power retarders do the job. The tower operator, his eyes on a teletype list that gives the order in which cars are coming to the hump the track on which they must go, and the care that must be used, has in charge the momentary destiny of someone's goods. With an enviable record for accuracy, he can send the car off in the right direction and by fingertip control operate steel grippers that slow or stop the car. its own carefully adjusted momentum may go all the way to the end of an empty track or come to rest on the near end of a filled track. No shock, no shake, no jar. At the departure end of the yard, engines pick up the strings of outbound cars, now complete trains. A caboose is added as a final touch and another mile-long train is on its way, redistributing the nation's production and the nation's wealth. A rolling wheel on a steel rail is the country's most economical mass transportation. One ton, one mile, one cent. Protected all the way by unseen and seen guardians. Some of the guarding units see to maintenance of track and right of way. Maintenance for speed, maintenance for safety, maintenance for economy. The better the road, the better the ride, no matter what is carried. And unceasing watch is kept. To a boy and girl, the long way round may be the shortest way home. But railroads take the straightest course, bridging gaps in the surface of the earth, 
are boring through a mountain. And always there are those who serve by watching, marking need for change and replacement before the untrained eye could sense the need. Remember the kid next door with the jalopy patched together with baling wire? That sort of repair is almost as much his pride as the automobile itself. Not so the railroads. In the long run, and that means 19 billion miles a year in freight alone, the best is least expensive. Nature knows no rules of sportsmanship in her continual warfare with man. indeed to stricken people, builders of hope and renewed confidence in the reconstruction of the patterns of their lives. antelope of the iron horse, has brought diesel electric locomotives for switching and road service, has developed giant electrics for heavy traffic and steep grades. Research made steam do twice as much work on each ton of fuel, has helped speed up freight trains 62% in the last 20 years, has seen freight revenues lowered 24% per ton mile. And here's something else. Before 1883, there were more than 50 different varieties of local time used in the country. Joe! Oh, Joe! Yes, George, what is it? What time is it? 2.40. It's a train on time? Yeah, where are you going? Got to be in Newburgh in half an hour. Newburgh in a half hour? <laughs> Why, it can't be done. It takes 20 minutes to get there. Well, I've got half an hour. <laughs> yeah, but you can't make it, George, because Newburgh's across the county line. They're 45 minutes faster than we are. Oh, my, 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 my. Back in 1883, the railroad solved such time difficulties by working out four standard time zones, and their system has spread around the world. Research has meant streamlining, air conditioning, greater speed and safety, and means much more to you in comfort when you ride. 
You can't really be happy until you know America. And you can't know it until you've seen it at first hand. Have you seen piece of a forested mountain bowl holding a mirror of lake? Do you know the scent of the out of doors, the fragrance of wild flowers in the air? Have you seen the places where nature has torn apart the mountains and molded them into strange shapes, painting with all the colors of the rainbow? You can see them all, if you will, in comfort that helps create the most pleasant memories. Comfort, of course, includes your appetite. The modern train offers a wide variety of splendidly prepared food with meals to fit your budget and your taste. What's more, you can do all this on credit if you wish. Vacation, sickness, business, whatever your need, you can travel now and pay later. On your trip, the lounge car will probably be a favorite. An ideal spot for bridge. A chance to write that letter to Aunt Mary. Or to consider that deal with Jones and Company. The observation car is another well-liked place from which to see the land in all its richness and beauty. Night and sleep. The American railroads, in conjunction with the Pullman Company, provide the finest sleeping car service in the world, a type of sleeping accommodation for any desire. Many of the trains, on longer runs, offer a variety of personal services. And on some, you may even take a shower bath to increase the comfort of your journey. Ahead, at the end of the journey, lies the city, business or pleasure. A waterfall, beloved of many a honeymooner. There are rushing, sparkling, icy mountain streams, well stocked with fighting fish, that love the bait and battle the hook. There's the spank of wind against canvas and a knife-like prow to throw up a zestful salt spray. With speedy transportation, you can have your choice of water skiing in the south. Or snow skiing in the frozen north. with an amazing bag of tricks. Geyser and gorge, valley and mountain, and always, just around the next bend, there's something new and beautiful. Do you want to ship a Tiger? Railway Express, with its huge fleet of motor trucks and 23,000 offices, will handle almost anything. The cargo goes ahead of you as you ride. Honey bees to alligators, jewelry to Jersey cows. Express moves them all on passenger schedules. <music> Railway post offices annually handle 16 billion pieces of mail. When the Pony Express rider rode from Missouri to California, he carried a letter 2,000 miles in five days for $10. Today, the railroads carry a first-class letter the same distance in a day and a half and do it for only one-fifth of a cent, their share of the recent postage. Where do you live? On farm or ranch? 
in the valley or in the mountain, in village or town, or in the heart of the bustling city. Wherever you are, whatever you do, it's all the same. The rolling wheel meets the steel rail. The nation moves forward in a common purpose. Poultry and eggs rush to city markets. delivered overnight to far inland towns. Oranges and grapefruit from the sunny lands in all seasons. Milk and dairy products, everywhere to everywhere. Vegetables delivered garden fresh to city kitchens. Yesterday, Today, tomorrow, this is America, united with ribbons of steel.